The sun, the moon, and constellations were sometimes associated with gods because their movement in the sky also correlated with abundance and disaster on Earth. Astronomers could speak to these gods. They could predict the patterns in the sky and they could tell what they would bestow upon Earth. The sundial was one of the first instruments used to track the path of the sun. It was broken into 10 sections, each representing a different hour of the day. And in the center of it was a gnomon, and this was pointed at true north, and as the sun rose and set, it would cast shadows upon the surface of the sundial. The shadows not only indicated the time of day, but also the time of year. And we can use these simulations created by University of Nebraska-Lincoln to track the path of the shadows. This view is you standing on the horizon plane. You can change your latitude, month, day, and the hands on the 24-hour clock. Looking at the path of the sun during a given day in the northern hemisphere, we can see that the sun rises low in the east and travels across the southern sky towards the west. Your shadow is doing the opposite. It is stretched out pointing towards the northwest. It shrinks and then points due north. Then it expands again towards the northeast as the sun sets. We can move the latitude up and down to see how the shadow changes with position. The higher in the northern latitude that we go, the lower in the sky the sun is, and the longer the shadow is going to be. Now, when we go to the southern latitudes, the position of the sun and shadow flip. If we keep the latitude and time of day constant, as we scrub through the months, we'll see that the position and time that the sun sets varies throughout the year. If we position the sun at noon, it will hover around the meridian line that stretches from the north to the south, and the shadow is longer in the winter months and shorter in the summer months. These variations of shadow are caused by the Earth's tilt. You can use the simulation to trace the sun's projection on the Earth's surface and the angle that the sunlight hits. The sun's path in the sky is dependent on latitude, which means your sundial is too. So there's a link in the description to a site that has templates that you can print out according to the latitude that you live at. We modified our template by adding light-dependent resistors. We used an Arduino to monitor the output voltage of the sensors. As the light increased, the voltage increased. This way we could tell whether the sensor was in the sun or in the shade. You can determine the season by measuring the shadow cast at noon throughout the year. But what happens at night? Instead of just having one star to track, you have hundreds, and these aren't bright enough to cast shadows. So the Egyptians would use something called a merket, and this would track the 10 hours of night. Two people would line themselves up using the North Star. This would create a meridian line. One person would track the constellations as they passed this line to tell what time of night it was. Neither the sundial nor the merket could keep track of the two twilight hours that occurred in the morning and in the evening. And these are two of the celestial time trackers that the ancients used to use. If you join us on the next episode, we're going to talk about timekeepers that didn't need clear skies. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. You can follow us on any of these social media platforms. You can support us at patreon.com slash And remember, keep exploring.